I'm going to show you how to model your first 3D character in Blender. So let's make Jason. But the twist is, we're going to make him cute. Poor Jason. He's just so misunderstood. With this pile of, uh, yeah, that's not ketchup. Anyways, whenever doing character work, it's best to have some reference images in mind. I know that I want this render to feel something like in between a Funko Pop and Wallace and Gromit. The first thing that I'm going to do is go over to my modifier tab and add a subdivision surface modifier to this cube. I'm going to crank the subdivisions up to 4 and then apply the modifier by dropping this little arrow down and clicking apply. Now with your sphere selected, let's go into edit mode. You can do this by hitting tab or going to this drop down menu and selecting edit. We want to grab some faces out from the sphere to use as Jason's mask. What's he hiding under there anyway? Oh, oh god. In the left hand toolbar, we can click and hold down on this arrow icon. It will reveal some more options for us. Let's grab the circle select. This will just make it easier for us to select more faces of the mask at once. We're going to work smarter, not harder. Next, I'm going to select faces in the shape of what I want his mask to look like. To separate these, we're going to hit shift D then click. This will make a copy of the faces we highlighted and separate them from the sphere. Now we want to select both the mask portion and the sphere. Don't worry if you can't see a difference between the mask and the sphere. It's there, I promise. Hit the A key on your keyboard to select everything. Right click and go down to separate by loose parts. That was a lot. Now if we hide our original sphere, you can see what's left behind is this section of geometry. From here, select the mask and add a subdivision surface modifier. We are going to end up using these a lot, so get used to this workflow. Again, turn the subdivisions up to 4 and then apply them. Now, we are going to use a cool little modifier called Solidify. It's going to allow us to add some thickness to the mask. The amount you add here is really up to personal preference. Once you got the right amount, apply this modifier too. Now unhide your sphere and move the mask around until you get something that looks good to you. Quick tip, if your sphere is showing all the faces and it isn't smooth, just right click on it and select Shade Auto Smooth. One of the things that makes Jason's mask so iconic is the holes that are all over the surface of it. To pull this off, we're going to use some Boolean modeling techniques. Boolean modeling uses one mesh to cut holes from another mesh. That's a gross oversimplification, but that's how we're using it here. Add some cylinder primitives to your scene and then arrange them wherever you want to see the mask get punched in. This is also how we're going to do the eye holes. Once you like your mask placement, select them and then select your mask. Head over to the end tab. You can do this by clicking it open with this arrow or by clicking N on your keyboard. From there, click the tab that says tool, tool tool, and then hit difference. And now your mask should have holes wherever you had a cylinder pushing through it. Oh, I forgot. The bool tool isn't enabled by default in Blender. You have to manually turn it on. Do this, go to the edit menu, then preferences, then select the add-ons tab. Search for bool tool and turn it on. Like I said before, I used this same bool tool method to punch out some eye holes. I quickly shaped a cylinder to be a little taller than the normal holes and then punched out the mask with the bool tool. On to the neck. This is pretty easy. Just rotate your view under the head, grab some faces in edit mode, and extrude downward. After this, I threw on Yep, you guessed it, another subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the harsh lines on the neck. The ears are just another cube with a subdivision surface modifier added. However, unlike our pastimes, don't apply the modifier yet. Once I got the general shape I wanted, I went into the face select mode and inset a face into the front of the ear. Then I used the extrude tool to move it back. There we go, now it's looking a bit like an ear. Just drag the ear into the spot on the head that you want and size it accordingly. I went for some big old chunky ears here. We gotta do something to up the cuteness factor. Just don't make fun of Jason for his ears. After you get one, copy and paste the other using Control C and then Control V. Reposition the second ear and you're good to go. Okay, so every good mask needs some straps, so let's model those. To do that, we're gonna add a plane. Position the plane using your move, scale, and rotation tools. We are aiming for the top of the mask. Now, go into edit mode and select this line of the plane. Click this arrow to go into orthographic view. From here, we're going to use extrude to cursor by holding down the extrude tool icon and selecting it. Now, click along the top surface of the head to extrude out each new section of the strap. Once you're finished, throw on a subdivision surface modifier. 
and then a solidify modifier. Play with the values of the solidify modifier until you get your desired thickness, then apply both modifiers. I forgot to mention this earlier, but make sure you're applying your modifiers in order. If you go out of order, it can affect your final outcome. Now, use this process to apply as many straps as you want to the mask. I went for three of them. At this point, I got a little impatient and wanted to throw on some basic colors to Jason's head and mask. You can do this by selecting each portion of the head one by one and going to the material tab on the right hand side. Change the base color to whatever you want. Another thing I want to point out is that I'm rendering this scene using cycles, but you can also use Eevee if you prefer real-time rendering. After blocking out some rudimentary textures and colors, we gotta add the classic red triangle to Jason's mask. There's no real secret here, model a triangle shape. I used a cube that I slid around the lines of to make the triangle. After that, slap it on the forehead of the mask and give it a red material. To make Jason's torso, we're going to use a lot of the same tools we used to make the head and mask, but we're going to introduce one extra modifier, the mirror modifier. To get started, add a cube. Position the cube down on the Z axis below Jason's head. Now go into edit mode, select the cube and right click, then hit subdivide one time. Now each face of the cube should have four smaller faces on it. From here, select vertex mode and delete the vertices from the left half of the cube. Your cube should look something like this. From here, select the mirror modifier from the modifier tab. You'll have to tell Blender what axis you want to mirror across. For me, it was the Y axis. But now we have our cube back. Make sure you've checked the clipping option. This will join any geometry that is within range of another to keep our box from splitting. I know, I know, great tip, Dimitri. You just made us delete a cube only to remake it with more steps. No, wrong. This cube is magical, it's mirrored. So what we do to one side will automatically happen to the other side, thus saving us time and effort. Now, with our magical cube, add a subdivision surface modifier. Give it four subdivisions just like we did with the ear. And we're going to go into edit mode and use extrude, inner extrudes, and loop cuts to make the torso and arms. This part is a little redundant, so I'm going to leave a time lapse for you to follow along. But essentially, make sure you have the length of the torso that you want, and then use the extrude tool to pull out the arms. Once you get your upper body done, it's time to move on to the legs. This is almost an identical process as to how we did the torso. Add a cube, subdivide it, delete half, add the mirror modifier across the correct axis to make it magical, then pull out some legs by extruding the faces on the bottom part. I'll also leave a time lapse of how I did my legs, but this section will vary depending on the proportions you want for your own character. If you guys have any questions or get stuck, please, please, please put it in the comment section and I'll try to answer it the best I can. And if I can't, then I'm positive someone else knows the answer and will respond. That's the cool thing about the Blender community. People are usually pretty willing to help out in the comments. Moving on to Jason's boots and hands. If you made it this far, these are pretty easy. Add a cube to your scene for each piece. Tab into edit mode and extrude out wrist and ankle sections. For the hands, you'll want to use the inset faces tool to pull out the wrists. From there, the hands and boots get another subdivision surface modifier. Feel free to add some edge loops to bring back some of your harder edges where applicable. And since this is a pretty basic character tutorial, we won't bother with fingers. I'm sure Jason would cut them off anyway. Okay, here's the real fun part. Since we modeled the torso in the classic T position, we now need to rig up the torso and arms so that we can lower them and pose them. Go to the object tab and add an armature. Armature is a fancy name for what will control each part of Jason's upper body. Once you added your first armature bone, drag it down to the bottom of Jason's waist. Then tab into edit mode. You might need to turn on x-ray mode to make this part easier. Go to the top right of your screen where you see the four shader balls. These represent which view you are in. To the left of the wireframe mode, you can click this icon. Back in edit mode, we want to use the extrude bone tool located in the left hand tool menu. Grab the top of your first bone and extrude upwards like this. Then extrude some bones into the arm on the right side. Once you're finished here, highlight the top of the final spinal bone with your selection tool. Then click back into your bone extrude tool and extrude some bones into the second arm. Cool, not so bad. Now go back into object mode, highlight your torso, and then shift click onto your armature. Now left click and go down to parent. 
then choose with automatic weights. This process will attach the geometry from your torso to your new armature rig. By the way, make sure you've applied any modifiers on your torso before trying to pose your character. The mirror modifier can give some pretty strange results if it's left on. Once you're done with this, you can select your armature, go into pose mode, grab whatever bone you want to move and rotate it into place. Ah, that's better. Jason was probably getting tired from holding his arms up this whole time. From here, you're almost home free. Add in any missing materials, change up some colors, and add a colored background. I know Jason looks pretty simple and of course cute, but this workflow is the building block for creating more complicated characters. We covered a lot of topics in this video, so let me know if you'd like to see any of these concepts talked about in a longer video. 